The Rumble in the Jungle is one of the most iconic and exciting fights of all time, and it ended with arguably the greatest knockout ever captured on film. After eight brutal rounds, Ollie came off the ropes and hit Foreman with a lightning fast combination that sent him tumbling towards the ground. Instead of throwing follow up punches, Ollie stared Foreman down as he seemed to fall in slow motion towards the floor. No one at the time had given Ollie much of a chance, despite all of his talent and experience. This was mostly because of Foreman's immense power. Big George had walked through almost every competitor he had ever faced with his longest fight being an epic slugfest with Ron Lyle that lasted just five rounds. Ollie knew he couldn't outmuscle Foreman. If he wanted to win, he had to outsmart him. Foreman's style was built upon controlling his opponent's arms to set up his punches. He would hold his hands far out and paw at his competitor's guard. He was looking to smother them, knock them off balance, and pull down their hands and head. But from the opening bell, Ollie had a way to turn all of Foreman's best tricks against him. When Foreman extended his hands to paw at Ollie, he created an opening in his guard. Ollie was able to time Foreman and throw a quick straight punch in between the narrow space. When Foreman tried to pull down and trap one of Ollie's hands, Ollie simply pulled his hand back. He could depend on his incredible head movement to keep him safe, while Foreman barely ever moved his head at all. Without trapping Ollie's hand, Foreman had only succeeded in opening himself up for attack. One of the most effective techniques Foreman used in his many fights was to set up his punches by pushing his opponent's head or shoulder. This would knock his competitors off balance and give Foreman time to load up on a powerful blow. But Ali had made a career out of slipping his head past his opponent's jab and throwing a cross over their shoulder. When Foreman left his arm extended to push at Ali, it was the easiest thing in the world for him to treat it like a slow jab and throw his right hand over it. While Ali's strategy to use Foreman's wrestling against him was working incredibly well, it soon became clear that he had underestimated Foreman's skill at cutting off the ring. Foreman was able to repeatedly corner Ollie and land powerful blows. At first, Ollie tried his best to get off the ropes with mixed results. But then he did something that nobody expected. He leaned back on the ropes and began to taunt Foreman, daring him to punch harder. That he's covering up because he's hurt. And boy, I went to finish him. I threw everything I had. One round, two round, three round. He'd cover up again, hit me, and cover up again. And uh, after about the sixth round, I hit him with some good shot. He failed on me, really. And I thought he was giving up. And he said, George, that all you got, George? Show me something. And I realized all those punches were basically a waste. Ollie wasn't just taking punishment. He was deflecting blows off of his forearms and elbows, using the lax ropes to slip punches, and wrestling Foreman to tire him out. Almost every time Foreman went to the body, Ollie would pull his head down to take away his stability. No stability, no power. Still, Ollie was taking more damage with each passing round. And uh, after about the sixth round, I hit him with some good shot. He failed on me, really. But after eight brutal rounds, Ollie's plan had paid off. Foreman was on unstable footing, plodding forward on willpower alone, with barely any energy left. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I was the most tired I'd ever been in my life. I don't understand. That fight was going to go on for another five rounds or so. I didn't, I don't know if I would have made it anyway. Let's take a look at the last exchange. Foreman opens up his guard to Pa, desperate to control Ollie's hands to set up a fight ending punch with the little energy he has left. Ollie fires a quick one two in between his hands. Foreman has managed to get a hand on Ollie's shoulder, but Ollie pushes Foreman away and jabs to get some distance. Foreman probes with his lead hand to try to control Ollie's head, but Ollie slips and pulls Foreman's hand over his shoulder, taking a hold of the back of Foreman's head and turning him. Foreman is now in a terrible position, unable to attack, defend, or even see his opponent. Ollie hits him with a hard right. Foreman throws an uppercut that deflects off of Ollie's elbow and again extends his hand to try to gain some control. Ollie repeats the same sequence used a second ago, 
this time turning Foreman all the way onto the ropes. Dazed and desperate, Foreman again opens his guard to try to clinch, and Ollie dances away, attacking with short, tight punches. Ollie circles around as he punches, keeping Foreman off balance. He connects with an angled, whipping hook loaded up from behind his back. At this point, Foreman is done. Ollie finishes the job with a cross, and watches the man the world told him could not be beat fall to the floor. It's one of the greatest knockdowns from one of the most epic fights between two of the most skilled fighters to ever enter the ring. Let us know in the comment section what fights you'd like to see broken down from boxing, kickboxing, or MMA. I'm happy to say I've got two pretty big announcements. The first is that I've opened a sub on Reddit where you can post and share videos, articles, and personal posts about techniques and training. The sub is simply called Fight Right, and I've left a link below. The second announcement is that I'm finishing up a book on how the pros generate power in striking. It's advanced techniques boiled down into simple principles and easy to use drills. It comes with links to exclusive breakdown videos on the world's greatest knockout artists to help explain each section. You can pre-order now and get half off with the link below. For the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you Happy training.